The Heavenly Emperor has a monument named Longhuan. Born from heaven and earth, prepared to carry all the laws of the world, hidden in the jade capital, and unable to obtain a single view despite the desires of countless golden immortals. There is a demon named Great Sage who overturns the heavenly palace, causing the heavenly steel to fall to the mortal world keywords of the novel. Writing the Dragon Immortal Sun. In. Law with no pop ups, download the complete collection of Writing the Dragon Immortal Sun. In. Law TXT, read the latest chapters of Writing the Dragon Immortal Sun. In. Law. Chapter 1 Grandpa with White Beard. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Grandpa with White Beard, Bug. Bug. Come out quickly. Some honest little boys responded and quickly walked out of the door. Seven or eight young men of similar age outside the door immediately rejoiced when they saw him. A young man with clear eyebrows, neat clothes, lowered his voice and said mysteriously, Recently, many outsiders have come to the village to inquire about the stone monument in the mountain. We have come up with a way to make money. Come and join us quickly. The official name of Xiao Chong is Wang Chong. Because Chong Chong sounds the same, it is called Xiao Chong by the villagers, which is a nickname with a close connotation. The little insect's innocent face froze and asked dumbfounded, If you have any way to make money, just go ahead and do it. Why do you insist on calling me? You all know that my mother is strict in her management, and it's impossible to play with you. A few young boys suddenly started laughing and couldn't help but frown and wink. The young man with clear eyebrows and eyes said first, we don't want you to sneak out. As long as you draw a map of where that stone tablet is, we can sell it to those outsiders without any trouble. Xiao Chong shook his head and said, I don't know what kind of stone tablet it is. If you want to make money, go there. My mother wants me to memorize articles and I don't have time to play with you. I'll go back first. The little insect waved its hand and retreated back into its own door. The several young men looked at each other, lost in thought, and together they looked at the young man with clear eyebrows and eyes. The handsome young man couldn't help but curse and waved, gathering everyone together. He lowered his voice and said, that old man with white beard took us to the mountain to see that stone monument. Now we can't remember the way in, but the little bug has the ability to remember everything. He must remember. A tall and sturdy young man couldn't help but ask, Bug refuses, is there anything else you can do? Besides, we don't remember, and he may not be able to remember either. The young man with clear eyebrows and beautiful eyes exclaimed angrily, those people in the village claim to be willing to pay a few hundred tails of silver for someone to lead the way. Do you know how much a few hundred tails of silver is? Your family can't save it for ten lifetimes, it's enough to buy most of our village. The tall and sturdy young man fell silent for a moment and asked, What should we do? Yi Jior, you have many clever ideas. Come up with an idea so that we can get the money from those outsiders. After pondering for a while, Yi Jior suddenly patted her thigh and called out, I have a solution. You guys come with me first. These teenagers shouted, and in the blink of an eye, they left without a trace. The small insect's door was once again deserted. The little bug propped its ears slightly, and as it heard everyone outside leave, its mind couldn't help but wander. He was already born with a bit of innocence, and when his mind was not in his prime, he was a bit dull and foolish. That old man with a white beard took all the young people in the village to the mountains and asked us to read those inscriptions. Those inscriptions were really strange, they were not the current writing, and no one knew them. When the old man with a white beard saw that we didn't recognize the words on the stone, he was angry and wanted to kill us. Later, for some unknown reason, he released everyone back. The little insect's hand suddenly trembled, a chill emanating from the bottom of its heart, and deep fear erupted from its bones. At that time, everyone's life and death were hanging in a flash, and the danger was so tight that he didn't understand why the children in the same village didn't remember what happened when they returned. So Xiao Chong no longer wanted to get involved in this matter, and would rather use it as an excuse to study and politely refuse his village friends. 
he lazily returned to his own study and sat at the desk where he usually reads. There are 30.6 pages of rice paper on the desk, each of which is filled with strange words written in small regular script. The little insect relied on its unforgettable ability to memorize all the inscriptions it had observed that day, and then wrote them down silently upon returning home. He didn't talk to anyone about this matter. Looking at these dozens of rice paper, the little insect was stunned for a moment. He had read it many times and compared it with ancient books at home, but still couldn't recognize a single word. These words have been read for a long time, and there is a faint and strange power that can bewitch the mind. The little insect heard the sound of footsteps outside the room and quickly threw the handwritten inscription into the brazier, pretending to be studying seriously. Not long after, Wang Chong's mother, Ping Ping Ting Ting, walked out. Although his mother has an ugly appearance, she has a good demeanor and every move has the demeanor of a wealthy family. Seeing her son work hard to study, she also feels comforted. Wang Chang's mother was originally from a wealthy family. When she was a young girl, she was famous for her poetry and literature in the village. However, due to her ugly appearance, although she married a scholar, her husband also came from an imperial examination background and went all the way from being a county magistrate to being a maid. However, the couple did not live in harmony. After giving birth to a son, Wang Chang's mother decided to request her husband to return to his hometown to guard the old house, as his husband had repeatedly taken concubines and rarely visited his room. Everyone was left unharmed. Wang Chang's father readily agreed to send their mother and son back to their old house in the countryside. Wang Chang's mother waited on her in-laws, tidied up the courtyard, and comforted her son. She had a mother dot in dot law like demeanor, but she didn't pay much attention to the officials in the court. However, she always breathes a sigh of frustration in her chest, hoping that her son can stand out and give herself a face, so her teachings are quite strict, and Xiao Chong is usually most afraid of her mother's anger. Xiao Chong is diligent in reading and naturally has an excellent memory. Whenever he reads, he can read it once and never forget it. He can recite it three or five times and recite it fluently. Although he appears dull and foolish due to his dull nature, he is actually a gifted and intelligent child. The mother knew that her son would surely have success, and in the future, she would be able to achieve great success. She did not waste her teaching, and her heart was both happy and worried. A while ago, all the children in the village were taken away in the middle of the night by an old man with a white beard who had inexplicably cast some strange magic to see some inscriptions. Although they were all sent back and the children were all fine, the scene was lively and she was very worried about what would happen to her son again. After looking for a while, my mother suddenly said, Chonger, you are also twelve years old now and have become a scholar. Next year, you should go to the township examination. I plan to send you to the academy to study. The little insect was surprised and stood up, shouting, How could your mother think of sending her son away? Mother sighed and said, that incident a few days ago really scared Wayne Yang. If there's another old man with a black beard or an old ghost with a yellow beard who caught you, Wayne Yang won't live anymore. The little insect trembled slightly and suddenly lost its words. His mother paused for a moment and then said, Our village has had many outsiders lately who want to inquire about that stone tablet. I don't know where it came from, but it's not a good thing. If these people know that you kids have all gone to see the stone tablet and are looking for trouble with you, it would be a big deal of trouble. I have arranged the carriage and can start on the road today. When you leave, take Yuea with you as a personal maid, and then take Liozi as a book boy. With them taking care of you, I can rest assured as a mother. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Wandering on the End of the World compassionate and relatively leaning on the hall gate. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 2 Wandering on the End of the World, compassionate and relatively leaning on the hall gate The little insect suddenly had an impulse and knelt on the ground, shouting, Mother, let's go together. I always feel that the village is not very stable, and I'm worried that my mother may have something to do. Mother smiled and said, What nonsense is this child talking about? 
This is our old house, where are all the ancestral houses and ancestral halls. Where can my mother leave? He tried hard to persuade his mother, but when she didn't listen, he had nothing to say. He could only kneel down and kowtow his head, saying goodbye to her affectionately. The attachment of children to their mother is innate, and they need to separate from her at this time. The little insect is young and doesn't quite understand what sadness is, but only has a faint feeling that they are afraid that they will not see their mother for a long time, and their heart is very reluctant. Since the last time something happened and someone caught his son in the courtyard, Wang Chang's mother has been hanging in her heart, otherwise she wouldn't have sent her beloved child to study abroad. She is a very decisive woman, and since she has made up her mind, she has no delay. She grabbed her son's hand and took him to the backyard. The carriage, entanglement, packages, and personal maids and bookboys were all prepared long ago, and even the coachman who drove the carriage was carefully selected by the elderly family. The Wang family has inherited poetry and books for several generations, and Wang Chang's father also served as an official in the court. The family has hundreds of acres of fertile land, and more than a hundred servants and maids, including Zhuang Han. They are relatively prosperous in their daily lives. Wang Chang's mother was worried about her child and sent the most capable old family member, Wang Bo, to her son. The sixth son was Wang Bo's youngest son, and both father and son were born servants of the Wang family, serving several generations and being the most reliable. Although the little insect was unwilling to leave its mother, it also knew that her mother was the most stubborn and rebellious. With tearful eyes, it bid farewell to her mother and got on the carriage. Taking advantage of the early weather, it hurriedly set off. Wang Bo knew that his mistress was worried about the safety of the young master, so he hurriedly drove the carriage all the way, hoping to arrive at the town where he stayed before it got dark. The master and servant in the carriage were three people, but the sixth son was fine. The little bug was also able to support him, but on the contrary, Yuea's pretty face turned white, as if she had been tossed and turned upside down. However, she dared not move and could only hold back forcefully, not knowing how uncomfortable it was. Yuea Air was originally a maid by the side of Wang Chang's mother. The little maid had a delicate appearance and was a young beauty. Wang Chang's mother was quite fond of this little maid, who was appointed as a concubine for her son. As soon as he grew up, she made the decision to fulfill the marriage for the two of them. If it weren't for worrying about my son going out without anyone to serve, I wouldn't have pointed it out to the bug so early. The little insect saw that Yuya's face turned pale. It took a scarf from its sleeve and handed it over, whispering, Yuya sister, if you feel uncomfortable, just spit on this scarf. Yuya wanted to refuse, but couldn't help but vomit out with a whoosh. The little insect opened the scarf, not missing a trace, wrapped it in dirt, casually threw it out of the car, and took out another scarf from its sleeve. He instructed Liozi to open a water bottle, dipped it in some water, and handed it to Yueya. Yueya wiped her mouth before feeling better. She blushed and said, Yueya is not up to par and has caused trouble for the young master again. Xiaochong smiled and gave up, without any sweet words to coax the little maid. He has been studying since childhood and is well versed in etiquette. He has also received guidance from his mother, so although he is affectionate towards Crescent Moon, he does not have any inappropriate thoughts and does not dare to be overly enthusiastic. Yueya vomited out and felt better. She took a few more sips of water and was about to ask when she would be able to get to the lodging town ahead. Suddenly, the horse pulling the carriage let out a long hiss, causing the carriage to suddenly shake and almost throwing the little girl out of the carriage. It was the insect that pulled her up, which allowed Yueya to sit firmly. Without the need for his own young master to speak, Lu Zi lifted the door curtain, glanced outside, quickly withdrew, and whispered, We seem to have encountered a thief who robbed us. The little insect trembled slightly. He had read a lot and looked dull, but his mind was very clear. Knowing that it was really a robbery, it was useless to hide in the car. He got up and lifted the door curtain to the outside of the car. At this moment, 
Wang Bo didn't know what to say and was so scared that his whole body trembled. If encountering bandits, Wang Bo can also be considered to have traveled far and wide, with considerable knowledge, and would never be afraid of such a situation. The little bug stood up in the car and looked ahead, but where was the thief? I saw a monster with black fur all over and exposed bones, breathing black smoke and giggling eerily. These ferocious and fierce ghosts are like old corpses breaking out of coffins, walking around in the light of the day and the sun. I don't know how deep their movements are, why aren't they terrifying? The little insect was afraid in his heart, but the monster only screamed without hurting anyone. He dared to bow and try to slow down his voice, saying word by word, Senior. You have already cultivated a Taoist method, and I don't expect it to make things difficult for us ordinary people. Money in the world probably doesn't matter to the senior. If you need any blood or food, you can take Wang Chang's life. I hope you can spare my family. The monster chirped twice and suddenly backed away. A short middle dot aged man wearing a black Taoist robe walked out from behind the monster. Just now, he was blocked by the monster, so a few people couldn't see him. The middle dot aged Taoist in the black robe sneered twice and said, You have some bone and blood aura. I'm just asking for directions. Although I come from an evil sect, I don't easily hurt people. The little insect arched its hand, paused for a moment, and asked, Where do you want to go? Senior. The middle dot aged Taoist in the black robe sneered twice before asking, In which direction is Shao Han Mountain? The little insect was slightly surprised, and Shao Han Mountain was the location of the stone tablet. Without hesitation, he raised his hand and said, There are six or seven mountains nearby, and Shao Han Mountain is one of them that is not very prominent. In that direction, there is a local temple on the mountain. The middle dot aged Taoist in the black robe nodded and patted the monster with all its black hair and bones exposed outside, whispering, Come with me quickly. The monster took a long breath and spewed out a thick black smoke, which condensed and did not disperse. It wrapped the middle dot aged Taoist in the black robe and slowly flew towards the sky. Wang Bo fell back and was so scared that his whole body collapsed. The little bug called out a few times before standing up trembling and shouting, I'm scared to death. It's the first time I've seen such a fierce monster in my life. Wang Bo took a few breaths, wiped his sweat, and said somewhat ashamed, an old man is not as good as a young master. He can answer such a monster fluently without any fear. Xiao Chong just shook his head and said lightly, let's go. Then he walked back into the carriage and sat down. In fact, he was already trembling with fear, and his clothes were soaked in cold sweat. The carriage had only taken a few steps forward when Lu Zi let out a shout and shouted, that old Taoist seems to have lost something, it must be a magic weapon. He jumped off the ground and after a moment, he grabbed a copper ring and came up. Wang Bo wanted to reprimand his younger son, but due to the face of his own young master, he didn't say anything in the end and drove the carriage on the road. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Handling Copper Rings You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Handling Copper Rings Yueya was quite scared and hid a bit further. She said expectantly, there might be some ghosts in the old Taoists' things. If you don't throw them away quickly, it will be very bad if they get caught by evil forces. The little bug was quite bold and took the copper ring casually. It only glanced at it and couldn't help but be taken aback. There are six engraved characters on this copper ring, which he has read more in the past few days. It is the inscription on the stone tablet in the deep mountains. The young man pondered to himself, the inscriptions on this copper ring are just like those on that stone tablet. What kind of spell are these inscriptions? Once you understand them, you can turn the world upside down and drive mountains and seas. Xiao Chong has a dull temperament. He usually studies poetry and literature, but occasionally reads some idle books. He knows that there are strange people and scholars, as well as immortal beings in this world. These people have the magical power to summon wind and rain, 
the divine ability to turn rivers and seas, and are proficient in countless powerful skills. A while ago, the white-bearded old man who captured all the children in the village was a similar character, able to capture a whirlwind on the flat ground and fly away, only to meet the short black-robed Taoist who was also a similar character, able to drive monsters to fly and flee. Just waiting for idle people to never see any strange characters in their lifetime. It is said that emperors throughout history yearned for the method of immortality, searched the world, but could not find a serious immortal family. At most, they could catch a few martial arts masters. Although they had some spells, they did not understand the door to immortality. Xiaochong's poetry and books have been passed down from family to family, and his mother earnestly teaches him that he hopes to achieve success and make a career. He never wants his son to become a monk and learn Taoism, but how can he not have illusions? The little insect silently recited the inscription, comparing it with the six characters on the copper ring one by one. In just a moment, it found more than ten corresponding characters. Most of these ten inscriptions have only two or three corresponding characters, and there are only three inscriptions that completely contain the six characters on the copper ring. Each inscription is several times more lengthy than the characters on the copper ring. The little bug had nothing to do, so he took out a piece of white paper from his backpack and wrote down the three lines of inscriptions that completely contained the six characters on the copper ring. He pondered over and over again, and there was nothing else to do on the way. It was just a game to pass the time. Yueya only treated her as a young master reading and dared not disturb her. Liozi was lively and soon lost patience. She eagerly looked out of the car and saw the scenery along the way. The carriage had been driving for several hours, and in the evening, Wang Bo warned at the exit that the shelter was not far ahead. The little insect had just put down the copper ring and the paper page with three strange lines of writing. It was about to lift the door curtain and take a look when suddenly a golden star appeared in its eyebrows, causing its body to sway slightly. Upon seeing this, Yueya quickly came over to help her. Liozi also asked, Young master, is reading too much and feeling dizzy? The little insect waved its hand, indicating that it was okay, but was extremely surprised. A grand and majestic text, with a clear light like day and a subtle and unpredictable nature, hung before its eyes, like a live carp, darting around with incredible agility. It's one of those three lines of text. The little bug was slightly surprised and tried to concentrate. This grand and majestic path, with a clear light like day and a faint and impermanent writing, seemed to have a strange power circulating. The copper ring hidden in his sleeve suddenly let out a faint roar. This soft roar was so faint that Wang Bo, Lu Zi, and Yu Ya had never heard it. The little insect remained silent and did not show any signs. Wang Bo drove into a small town and settled in the only inn in the city. After dinner, the four of them rested separately. Xiaochong and Yueya live in the same suite. Yueya is in the outer room, while he is in the inner room. Wang Bo took Liuzi to the car to rest and save some accommodation money. After a day of hard work, Xiaochong was also quite tired. After reading for a while, he became mentally unstable and went to bed in a deep sleep. In the middle of the night, suddenly there was an urgent need to urinate. The little bug crawled up and went to the outside, without waking up Yueya. It searched for a clean bucket and started making a fuss. After pouring a puddle of water, the little bug felt light and didn't go back to sleep. He pushed open the window and looked at the moonlight outside, suddenly feeling a bit interested. Wang Chang's mother was quite strict in her control. Although he was an extremely obedient child, he also felt constrained in his heart. He traveled far to study and left his mother, feeling particularly reluctant. In the end, he was free from bondage and had a hint of joy. The little insect looked at the moonlight outside and couldn't help but feel happy. Suddenly, it had a desire to bring the silver plate like moon into its palm, and casually grabbed it towards the night sky. He also knew that this was just a delusion, no one could hold on to the moon at all. This idea was driven by inspiration, purely natural and without any distractions. 
With his arms protruding, the magnificent and majestic path shone like day, and the elusive and impermanent words emitted a faint light. A strange force was circulating, suddenly penetrating into his sleeve. The copper ring hidden in his sleeve suddenly doubled in size, and with a whimper, Ying Yen flew out. The little bug couldn't help but be startled. It couldn't help but close its five fingers and make a virtual scratch. The copper ring hummed twice, then shrank back to its original shape and flew back, caught by him. The little insect was stunned for a long time, mixed with surprise and joy, and thought to himself, that magnificent and majestic writing, with clear light like day and subtle and unpredictable changes, can actually control this copper ring to become bigger and smaller, flying back and forth. Isn't it the immortal family's wonderful technique? The little bug tried again, but the copper ring didn't move. He tried hard a few times, but suddenly his heart was blessed and he silently remembered the inscription for a while. After half an hour, the little insect felt its heart like a crystal clear lake water. With a thought, the inscription that had just been written flew out of its mind and landed on the copper ring in its hand, driving it to slowly fly up. The little insect felt a slight joy in its heart, and miscellaneous thoughts arose. The copper ring fell to the ground with a clang. He was slightly surprised, afraid of waking Yueya, so he grabbed the copper ring and secretly slipped back to the bed. Xiao Chong is already quite intelligent. With two experiences, he gradually found the key. Every three to five times, he can control the copper ring to fly up. Even if he accidentally falls on the bed with a thick bedding, there won't be much noise. The little insect played happily until the rooster sang at dawn and the sky was slightly brighter. Knowing that they still had to hurry during the day, they reluctantly put away the copper ring, forcibly closed their eyes, and warmed their spirits. The next day, Wan Bo continued to drive on the road, and the little insect was too lazy to speak all the way. He held a book in his hand, but didn't go to read it. He just silently memorized the inscription repeatedly. Yesterday, he used an inscription to control the copper ring, which could be big or small, fly or return. He vaguely understood that the text on the stone tablet should be a secret technique of the immortal family, unparalleled in mystery. The words on the stone tablet have a total of 365 lines, and he doesn't know what their functions are. He only forcibly memorized them that day, fearing that if he didn't review them for a long time, he might forget a little bit, which would be too late to regret. Yueya and Liuzi dared not disturb the young master's reading, and the three children remained silent, making the car quite stuffy. In the blink of an eye, three or four days had passed, and Wang Bo drove his carriage to the White Egret City, which was the place where Wang Chang's mother had sent him to study. End of this chapter Chapter 4 The White Egret Academy, Xia Yanhui, De De, by Yin Meng You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 The White Egret Academy, Xia Yanhui, De De, by Yin Meng because he had already made arrangements, Wang Bo only stayed for one day and handled various matters properly. He sent Xiao Chong to the Egret Academy and rented a yard outside the academy to settle down Liuzi and Yueya. Only then did he go back to report to Xiao Chong's mother. Xiao Chong has never left home alone, and when he entered the academy, he felt a bit scared. He was already dull and reserved, and he didn't know how to handle himself. The White Egret Academy has also received several students of the same age as insects, with an elderly person specifically responsible for it. The old man attracted him and first collected all the books and miscellaneous items from the academy, instructing them on the rules of the academy, and then sent them to the accommodation with a smile before leaving. Xiao Chong signed up on time and came relatively late, so he didn't have any formal courtyard and lived in the attic of the library. The attic is filled with damaged books sorted out by the academy, with only two beds installed in the corner. The other one is said to be a student named Zhu Ying, who is currently listening in class and has not yet come back to rest. The elderly guide said that Zhu Ying is about the same age as Xiao Chong, and he became a scholar in his teens. He must study hard to pass the imperial examination. 
Xiao Chong bowed to his bed, let out a long sigh, calmed down, and sorted out the books distributed by the academy. He had read some of the books distributed by the academy, but had never read them before. He wanted to review them first to avoid leaving too much homework and attracting jokes from his classmates. He has a remarkable memory. By the light of the outside sky, he finished flipping through a book in just half an hour, closed the scroll, and pondered deeply. The words he had just read flowed like flowing water through his heart, without any stagnation. Although the little insect can remember everything, in the past, if it wanted to memorize an article like a flow, it had to review it a few more times to avoid stumbling. This situation was unprecedented, and I couldn't help but feel secretly happy in my heart, thinking, I think I'm getting older and smarter again. The little insect was pondering when suddenly there was a sound of footsteps on the stairs. A young man picked up a book and walked up. This young man has a curd-like skin, slender eyebrows that fly diagonally into his temples. His eyebrows and eyes are full of spiritual energy, making him a beautiful young man who attracts attention among millions of people. He also has a slender figure and is slightly thinner than the average person. His demeanor is handsome, making him easily likable. Although Xiao Chong was young, he couldn't help but secretly praise him, what a beautiful young man. Seeing Wang Chong, the young man was slightly surprised. In an instant, his cheeks turned slightly red and he even felt a little shy. He asked, How did you come to my residence? Xiao Chong quickly stood up to bow and said calmly, I've seen my senior brother. Little brother Wang Chong, he was arranged here by the academy. If there is any disturbance, I feel very uneasy. He came to study at the White Egret Academy and really wanted to make some good friends. His speech was very gentle. After looking at him for a while, Zhu Ying regained her composure and chuckled, saying, I have forgotten that someone mentioned that brother Wang Chong will come to live with me. Little brother Zhu Ying, from Chuan Sha, has heard that brother Wang Chong is talented and has unforgettable talents. Please take good care of him in the future. In front of Zhu Ying, Xiao Chong felt somewhat ashamed and said, This is my first time leaving home, and many things are not comprehensive. I hope Zhu can give me more guidance. The two and a half year old children chatted briefly and both felt that the other was young and mature. Zhu Ying is two years older than Wang Chong and is already fourteen years old, with a style of being a small adult. Wang Chong Yan talks naively, but his every move exudes a dignified demeanor and strict family discipline. Zhu Ying originally had a somewhat refusal attitude towards people thousands of miles away, but seeing Wang Chong's gentle nature, she gradually developed a sense of closeness, which really gave him a lot of guidance. Xiao Chong doesn't often play with peers in his hometown, and occasionally he can't chat with his friends. The children in his hometown don't like reading, have a stubborn temperament, don't know about the past and present, don't know about the world, and talk about family and family matters. They are not mischievous and not suitable for the little insect's temperament. On the contrary, it has earned him a reputation among the rural children for being silent and not good at words. Zhu Ying is different from the children he usually sees. She is knowledgeable and has a wide range of knowledge. Many of her words make Xiao Bu suddenly enlightened and broaden his horizons. Zhu Ying also expressed a slight admiration in her heart. Wang Chongyan was naive and unaware of worldly wisdom, but as long as she talked about articles and gave a brief introduction, she could learn from one thing to another and draw analogies. Various book allusions were extremely familiar and flowing, without hesitation, and her writing was also agile. She was a bit more knowledgeable than her older classmates. Some people know each other from afar, but they may not be considered close, while others meet on the same side and pour out love as before. The two of them have a hint of regret for meeting too late. Zhu Ying talked to Wang Chong about some anecdotes about the academy, feeling a little tired and feeling a little shy. He said, Wang Chong, little brother. I have some quirks and I really like quietness. I can't have anyone close at night. Can you sleep less quietly? Xiao Chong smiled and said, I sleep the quietest. Brother Zhu doesn't need to worry. 
he also had to rush all day before settling down again. The excitement he had just talked to Zhu Ying made him feel tired at the moment. The two of them said their goodbyes to each other, and Zhu Ying lay down in her clothes. Wang Chong took off his coat and only slept in his middle coat. Although he felt tired, the first time he went on this long journey, he lay down for a while and couldn't sleep. He silently thought about the inscription, gradually calming down and his fatigue dissipated. In just a moment, he fell into a deep sleep. The next day, there was no need for anyone to wake him up. The little bug woke up early and looked out the window, only to see that the sky was still a bit hazy and there was not much daylight. I had the intention to sleep for a while longer, but only felt refreshed. So I took out a book and flipped through it under the light outside for a while. Unconsciously, I memorized most of it. Zhu Ying woke up a bit later, feeling quite proud and diligent. Seeing that Wang Chong had risen earlier than him and was already studying, he felt a bit embarrassed and thought to himself, I heard that this person has quick thinking. I didn't expect him to study so hard. I don't want to lose to him. I also want to get up and read a volume of poetry and literature. After Zhu Ying woke up, she washed her hands thoroughly and then flipped through the lessons she had learned yesterday. He was distracted by chance and saw Wang Chong suddenly cover up, looking lost in thought with his eyes closed. After a moment, reciting in a voice as small as a mosquito, I couldn't help but be surprised. I quickly flipped through the bookshelf and found the book that Wang Chong had memorized. I checked it word by word and was shocked to find that it was exactly the same. The little insect recited it three times in a row before opening its eyes. It saw a look of shock on Zhu Ying's face and stared at itself. It couldn't help but smile foolishly and ask, did Zhu also get up? Zhu Ying sighed three times before asking, how many textbooks have you memorized from the academy? Xiao Chong said somewhat ashamed, I only came yesterday. There are seventeen volumes of newly received books that I haven't read, and last night I only had time to memorize one volume. I just memorized another volume, and there are fifteen volumes that I haven't memorized. Zhu Ying glanced at Wang Chong and suddenly felt that this simple and honest young man was despicable. The academy issued a total of thirty-six volumes of books, and on the first day of school, they claimed that they were only fifteen volumes short of memorizing them. Listen to what he says, but human language. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Luo Laoyao You're late. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 5 Luo Laoyao Your late Juing couldn't help but cover her face and said, Do you know that there are hundreds of students at the White Egret Academy? Those who can memorize two or three volumes of books are probably only ten fingers away, all through years of hard work. If you can memorize two volumes a day, purely by heart, you are already the top student in this academy. The little insect was slightly surprised and whispered, it's not difficult to memorize books. These books are only tens of thousands of words, even if you have a poor memory, you will become familiar with them after memorizing for a few more days. Why don't everyone love reciting? Zhu Ying's heart echoed repeatedly with one sentence. Is this human language? He gave a bitter smile and replied, Brother Wang Chong, I advise you not to talk to people about things you are used to reciting, otherwise you will be excluded by other students, afraid that life will not be smooth. The little insect hesitated slightly and whispered, I know. Although he was born with a simple and honest personality, he was far more intelligent and sharp than ordinary children, knowing that Zhu Ying was indeed doing it for his own good. Is the saying that wood is beautiful in the forest not simple and popular? Who is not really naive? Zhu Ying couldn't help but smile when he saw Wang Chong listening to his words and said, Let's have breakfast at Mao Shiren classes at Qin Shi in White Egret Academy. It's almost time now, let me take you to dinner. Upon hearing the words, the little insect exclaimed in a good voice and quickly washed up. He hid the copper ring in his sleeve, but gently tore up the white paper on which he had written three inscriptions. He then kneaded and twisted it again to make sure that the text on it was no longer visible, 
and discarded it in the paper basket. Zhu Ying and Wang Chong chatted and laughed along the way, and went to the cafeteria. He was tall and upright, with sleeves and robes that caught the eye. Some even glanced at Wang Chong a few times. Wang Chong was young at a young age, and his face was once again simple and honest. He was mistakenly thought to be Zhu Ying's relatives and younger brothers. Several students greeted Zhu Ying in a row, but did not pay attention to Wang Chong. At most, he nodded slightly. Zhu Ying didn't introduce Wang Chong to anyone, just smiled and remained calm. The two of them entered the cafeteria, and Zhu Ying didn't ask Wang Chong what he wanted to eat. She took the initiative and ordered him a portion of crispy meat, green vegetables, steamed eggs, and a bowl of colorful rice. He only wanted a bowl of plain noodles himself, and ate it quite lightly. Wang Chang's mother always taught her son to be strict and did not allow him to be picky eaters. However, Wang Chang's father was a court attendant, and the servants in the family were carefully selected. The chefs all came from the capital, and it was rumored that they were dismissed from the prime minister's office. His skills were unique compared to famous restaurant chefs, and his daily diet was exquisite. On the way from home to the academy, there were not many famous Lu Xing restaurants. The dishes cooked in ordinary restaurants were simply edible, far inferior to those of ordinary wealthy families, let alone those of officials. Wang Chong was not very accustomed to eating. The chef at the White Egret Academy has some background. Although the dishes are simple, the taste is really good, much better than the food on the way. The young man ate with chopsticks and was happy to eat. Zhu Ying was eating in a refined and refined manner. He had intended to talk to Wang Chong about his upcoming classes, but when he saw that Wang Chong was not eating fast or slow, and followed the ancient saying of, eat without saying a word, sleep without saying a word, he refused to say a word and couldn't help but smile, so he let go of this thought. The little insect finished a meal, and naturally a servant from the academy came over to tidy up the dishes. When he saw that Zhu Ying was still half a bowl of noodles missing, he pushed the chopsticks and refused to eat. He couldn't help but ask, Brother Zhu, you don't have much appetite. Zhu Ying took out a silk cloth from her sleeve, wiped her mouth, and said with a smile, my appetite has always been like this, not because of my appetite. I envy Wang Chongdi for having a good appetite and being able to finish all these things. The little insect touched its stomach and said to itself, some three small dishes, a bowl of rice, what's so hard to eat? He had already had breakfast and was still early in class. He wanted to go back and review another book when he was about to say something to Zhu Ying. Suddenly, the sky shook and the earth shook. Thunder thundered for thousands of miles over the academy, illuminating the sky. Countless students became agitated and shouted in unison, what a fast black cloud. Zhu Ying was curious and left the cafeteria. Looking up, she saw a black cloud, ravaging the city and pulling out the fortress. She was as fast as a galloping horse, rushing from afar and not rushing to the sky above the academy, enveloping it completely. He changed his color slightly and shouted, Brother Wang Chong, let's hide quickly. This is not a good omen. The little insect was also shocked in his heart. He had seen such black clouds before. The old man with a white beard had just stirred up a black cloud and taken away all the children in the village. He couldn't help but cry inwardly, is it because the old man refused to give up and came to the Egret Academy to catch people again? Bitter. I didn't expect to come to the White Egret Academy to study, but I still couldn't avoid this experience. The little insect was secretly troubled when it heard a faint cry, echoing through the clouds. A cold and clear light rose from the back mountain of the Academy, pressing against the oppressed black clouds. The students in the entire Academy were all shocked but only a clear voice shouted, Luo Laoyao. Last time I spared you, I dared to come and die. Black clouds rolled and a muffled voice echoed, like the roar of thousands of wild beasts in the air, completely speechless. The person from the back of the mountain seemed to understand, chuckled lightly, and shouted, Your little devilish thing, I drove it away eight hundred years ago. Luo Laoyao. 
You're late. A figure in white clothes rose into the air, and thousands of clear lights converged into a wisp, welcoming the black clouds in the sky. Black clouds rumble, but they never suppress that ray of clear light. Black clouds and clear light entangled, and after a fierce battle for half a day, clear light finally broke through black clouds and headed southeast. Black clouds closely caught up, but with half a pillar of incense, even cloud feet could not be seen from the sky. The students in the academy recovered from their stunned wooden rooster and thunderous toad posture, and began to discuss in groups of three or five. Some were afraid, some were excited, and various emotions were present. Zhu Ying lightly patted her chest and let out a long breath. Looking back, she saw Wang Chang's horrified appearance and couldn't help but laugh, it's not coming at you. Why should you be so shocked? The little insect thought to himself, have you ever been caught by the old man with a white beard? Otherwise, he would be even more frightened than me. He couldn't talk about his own experience either, so he could only say, I'm too young and I don't read much, so my energy cultivation skills are naturally not possible. Zhu Ying deeply thought so, after all, Wang Chong is only twelve years old. At this age, going out to study, how can he be like an adult? Even if adults encounter such situations, it is inevitable that they will panic. Wang Chong is still a child, and this behavior is actually serious. He said with a smile, in the future, when you encounter such things, come to my arms, my brother. Protect you. Zhu Ying spoke at this point, knowing that she was momentarily open-dot-minded and had said the wrong thing, which was not in line with her identity. A blush appeared on her handsome and extraordinary face, and the remaining half of the sentence became ambiguous. He extended his two fingers and wiped his cheek, knowing that he must have blushed. He dared not look at Wang Chong again and walked away quickly. The little bug quickly followed Zhu Ying's footsteps and instinctively glanced at the chest of this Zhu senior. Suddenly, a very out-of-tune thought appeared. Zhu senior's chest muscles are so big. Have you ever practiced martial arts? A handsome figure with both literary and martial abilities. End of this chapter. Chapter 6 Shaw You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Shaw, Brother Zhu, Brother Zhu Someone called out a few times in a row, and Zhu Inkai suddenly woke up with a smile and replied, Brother Su. What's calling for? A lively and playful young man with a somewhat childish appearance pretended to be mysterious and said, Brother Zhu, do you know who the person who just wielded his sword and took off the Black Mountain Demon just now? The little insect thought to himself, this guy has such sharp eyes that he can see that the clear light in the sky is like a sword. He has heard so much and knows that the Black Cloud Master is called the Black Mountain Demon. Isn't it a practitioner? Zhu Ying was also puzzled and asked, How do you know that Shao Fuzi is an imperial sword? He seemed to know he had said the wrong thing and quickly added, But that's Black Cloud, not Black Mountain. The scholar surnamed Su laughed heartily and shook his head as he sang, Once upon a time, there was a beautiful woman named Shao Su who wielded her sword and moved it in all directions. The onlookers were as dejected as the mountains and the heavens and earth remained low for a long time. Huo Rui shot at the nine sunsets, pretending to be like a group of emperors soaring like dragons. It came like thunder to calm down the anger, let alone the clear light of the river and sea. That black cloud is like a mountain, naturally it is the black mountain demon. I didn't expect that the back mountain would be the residence of Shao Fuzi, so he must have wielded his sword to slay demons. Xiao Fuzi's methods are exquisite, like the clear light of the river and sea, naturally wielding a sword to slay demons. The little insect lightly pondered and said, Isn't this my father's poem, observing the sword and weapon of the little Su family? How could it be related to this? Brother Su must be far-fetched, fabricating stories and talking nonsense to people everywhere. He couldn't bear to listen anymore. Zhu Ying sighed. How could he not know the habits of this classmate? At the moment, he leaned slightly and revealed Wang Chong, saying, 
This is the new junior brother of Wang Chong, known as a prodigy and already known for his achievements as a scholar. This is senior Su Yi, who is one year older than me, but has a lively personality and is used to playing around, very unstable. Suddenly, a student shouted loudly, isn't the back mountain where Xiao Fuzi resides? It turns out that Xiao Fuzi is a divine and immortal. Let's go and learn some immortal techniques. Countless students were reminded by this person to shout and shout back to the back of the mountain, all full of enthusiasm. It seemed that the great crisis just now, which was overshadowed by dark clouds, did not scare the whole group of young people. Su Yi chuckled and said, There are many books that say that extraordinary talents and scholars are proficient in the means of crossing rivers and seas. They can enter and exit the blue and dark, control clouds and fog, swim towards the North Sea, turn towards the sky at dusk, drink with immortals, compete with demons and ghosts for heights, but it's rare to see them. It's easy to encounter characters like Xiao Fuzi, even if they give up fame and fortune, they still have to seek an opportunity. They all went to Xiao Fuzi's residence to pay their respects. Let's also join in the fun. Xiao Fuzi loves your talent the most in his daily life. Perhaps he will take Brother Zhu as his disciple and teach him the methods of slaying demons and eliminating evil. Brother Su Yi was very enthusiastic, but Zhu Ying repeatedly declined and refused to go. He rolled his eyes and then came to tug at Wang Chong, urging him a few words. Little Bug couldn't help but say, honestly, the divine dragon sees the head but not the tail. This master Xiao has already shown his whereabouts, how can he still come back? Those who go to learn may be doing useless work. I still have to prepare my homework, so I won't join the fun with Brother Su. Su Yi saw that he couldn't persuade the two of them and was worried that someone might take the lead. He walked away in frustration, leaving him far away. Zhu Inkai couldn't help but chuckle and said, it's fortunate that these people have been studying for many years and can't even understand these common customs. It's better for Wang Chang's younger brother to have a clear understanding. The little insect sighed and glanced at Zhu Ying, then smiled lightly. They both saw the other person's clear eyes and felt like they had met their confidant. Zhu Ying took the initiative to say, Xiao Fuzi was a gentleman who came to our academy two years ago. He is quite proficient in the four histories and also has a good understanding of music and rhythm. His poetry and literary style are the top in our academy, and he is highly valued by the dean. But no one knows his background. He doesn't usually like to live in the academy and sneaks alone in the back mountain, only coming down the mountain if there is a lesson. Little brother, due to his slightly brilliant poetry and prose, he was highly valued by Xiao Fuzi. After pointing out several articles, he couldn't be considered a close friend. However, if he had the chance to meet Xiao Fuzi again in the future, he could give up his humble face and reconcile with Wang Chang's younger brother, allowing you to join his sect. Xiao Chong couldn't help but laugh and said, Why don't you apprentice yourself? Aren't you envious of such divine means? Zhu Ying chuckled and said, It's hard to say. The two of them chatted and laughed as they returned to the attic of the library. The little insect took out a book and began to recite it silently. Zhu Ying thought to herself that she was also a diligent student, but she did not see her classmates who worked so hard and worked hard. She admired her and took a book to read carefully. In no time, as he was about to invite Wang Chong to the classroom, he saw Wang Chong's eyes lightly closed and he began to recite in a low voice. He couldn't help but let out a faint sigh and muttered to himself, I thought my talent was far more agile than that of a man, but I didn't expect there to be someone like Wang Chang's younger brother in the world. Good living makes jealousy boil. Xiao Chong recited it once, although he still felt unfamiliar, he was thinking about class and quickly opened his eyes, saying, Brother Zhu, but it's time for the hour. Zhu Ying smiled and said, Not bad, it's almost midnight. Let's go to class together. The two walked side by side and arrived at the location of the library. The White Egret Academy divides students into four classes, A, B, C, and D, based on their academic abilities. 
Zhu Ying has already been promoted to Class A, and Wang Chong is new, but he has to go to Class D to listen to lectures. Therefore, the two of them separated in front of the library and went to classes separately. Xiao Chong entered the T-shaped library, put down his scroll, looked left and right, and saw that more than half of his classmates had never come. He took a book and wanted to recite it, but he heard the gentleman sitting in front clap his ruler and shout, Late student, let's evaluate your homework. The gentleman had a solemn expression on his face and immediately began his lecture. Wang Chong had just memorized a volume of six historical annotations that he had taught, but after listening for a few words, he didn't see anything new taught by the gentleman, and he became slightly distracted. This gentleman talked about a book and saw that most of the students were lethargic. He sighed in his heart and knew that these underachievers had no hope of studying and could not continue to work hard despite various adjustments. Only a few newly enrolled teenagers have potential, so they pay a lot of attention to the new students. Seeing that Wang Chang's mind is not right, they couldn't help but feel a little angry and shouted, New student, come and read a commentary on the Song Dynasty. Mr. Xiao Chong didn't know that he thought he hadn't listened attentively, but according to the usual practice at home, he calmly closed the book and started reciting. Duke Song was absent, but Hui Wen, Wu, Zhao Xiang, and Mongolian tribes passed away. Due to their last resort, they took Hanzhong to the south, Bashu to the west, Gao Yu to the east, and key points to the north. The feudal lords were afraid and formed alliances, seeking weakness and becoming one. The more Song Gonglian listened, the more surprised he became. He thought that Wang Chong was young and his literacy might not be complete. He asked him to read a paragraph as a warning, but he didn't expect the young man to recite the annotations of the six histories. He couldn't help but feel happy and secretly said, why is the academy so fresh? If he has enough knowledge, he shouldn't waste it in the T-dot class. He needs to be promoted as soon as possible. End of this chapter Chapter 7 Pianpian Zhu Sheng, Like the Sun in the East You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio Chapter 7 Pianpian Zhu Sheng, Like the Sun in the East Song Fuzi remained calm and said, It's okay. He instructed Wang Chong to sit down and resume his lecture. The children in the same class lacked learning ability, and one by one, they listened with worried faces as Song Gonglian continued his lecture on the Six Kingdoms collection. Class D only has one class per day. It's over in the morning and then it's over in the afternoon. Song Gonglian finished his studies and let the students go on their own, hurriedly searching for the dean. Sun F.A., the dean of the White Egret Academy, was a great Confucian scholar of the time. He came from an old family and filled the world with joy. When he saw Song Gonglian, he smiled lightly and said, Why is Gonglian so happy? Song Gonglian replied, It's not pleasant to have intelligent children teach them. Sun F.A. was slightly stunned and asked, Where can a smart child come from in the class of Ding characters? Song Gonglian smiled and said, The dean doesn't know if a prodigy has come to this courtyard. Although Sun F.A. was the dean of the White Egret Academy, he did not manage worldly affairs. Wang Chong, a young boy who came to study, did not even disturb this great Confucian scholar. Upon hearing this, he laughed and said, Have students recently become talented again? Song Gonglian quickly recounted Wang Chong's recitation of the annotations of the Six Kingdoms in the classroom and exclaimed, Such prodigies should be enrolled in the class of Bing characters. Sun F.A. was very surprised and said, Tomorrow, let that child come to my place and wait for someone to personally assess his homework. If he really has enough academic ability, he should be admitted to Class C. After recommending Wang Chong, Song Gonglian hesitated for a moment and couldn't help but ask, What is the origin of the black clouds in the daytime and the Shao Fuzi? Sun F.A. sighed and said, Zibuyu is a strange and chaotic person. Song Gonglian indeed had no more words, raised his hand slightly, and left freely. The White Egret Academy only has two meals in the morning and evening, and no lunch. After class, Xiao Chong was about to go back to the warehouse and rest, and then go to recite. 
Suddenly, a spiritual light flashed in his mind, and an inscription shone brightly. This inscription is completely different from the one that manipulates the ancient copper ring. It is deep and gloomy, with continuous births and vast soup, with the intention of being invincible. It gives rise to a force that wants to lead the young man outside the academy, but the force is not strong enough to resist. The little insect hesitated slightly, but ultimately, his youthful nature and curiosity prevailed. Following the power generated by this inscription, he calmly walked out of the academy. The Bailu city is built along the mountain, and the White Egret Academy is located at the foot of the White Egret Mountain. Not far from the academy is the White Egret Mountain. The little insect walked for half an hour, surrounded by barren mountains and wild ridges, with no one to smoke. Although the little insect is brave and not afraid, it is not a reckless child. Seeing the desolation around it, it hesitates slightly and thinks about turning around. His mind was fixed. Just as he lifted his foot, the deep and gloomy inscription in his mind, with a lingering and vast expanse of soup, with the meaning of being unbeatable, shook slightly and flew out of his mind, landing in the bushes. A black aura corresponded to each other, slowly rising into the air and spinning aimlessly over the trees. The little insect was dumbfounded and thought to himself, this black aura seems to be in the shape of Luo Laiao's control, but it's much smaller. Is it the black cloud and broken corners that Xiao Fuzi and Luo Laoyao fought and chopped off? He gained experience in wielding the imperial copper ring, silently pondered the inscription for a while, and with a touch of his hand, Black Qi was indeed summoned into his hand. This black air tentacle is soft, as if there is nothing, it can shatter when pinched, and it feels like water when touched, opening and closing as it goes. The little bug played with it for a moment and thought to himself, do you know if there's anything else nearby? He had this thought in his heart, and the inscription immediately resembled a dragon-startled insect, pulling him straight towards the south. The little bug knew there was no danger, so it happily left. Soon, it indeed found a second black aura. With a gentle touch, the two black energies merged into one, but only strengthened and solidified quite a bit. Xiao Chong is ultimately a twelve-year-old boy, and his playful heart does not diminish slightly from reading too much. He followed the deep and gloomy inscriptions in his mind, with continuous births and vast soup, like a dragon startling a stinging insect, with the meaning of being invincible, and ran east and west. Waiting until the sky turned dark, we had already found nineteen black clouds that merged into one, about half an acre in size, with the faint sound of wind and thunder nurturing them, fluctuating back and forth. The little insect had a heart to search again, and the inscription in his mind was no longer moving. Seeing that it was too late, he fixed his mind and walked back to the academy. He walked a long way in the afternoon, unaware of the path, and only saw the walls of the White Egret Academy in the middle of the night. The little insect saw that the gate of the academy was tightly closed, so it felt embarrassed to knock on it. It searched for a low courtyard wall, climbed over it, and hurriedly returned to the attic of the warehouse. Zhu Engjin was lying down in his clothes when suddenly he heard something moving. He quickly reached out and grabbed a short sword, shouting, Who is it? Xiao Chong quickly called out, Brother Zhu, don't panic. It's me coming back. Zhu Ying didn't see Wang Chong in the afternoon. He thought he had left the academy for a while and wouldn't come back tonight. He chuckled and said, why come back in the middle of the night? He lit the oil lamp and saw that the little bug was covered in a lot of dust and had a tired face. He couldn't help but be slightly surprised and asked, where did you go? What a mess did you make? The little insect replied, to be ashamed, I was wandering in the back mountain and accidentally got lost. I only found it back that night. He was about to take off his clothes and lie down when he saw Zhu Ying with loose hair, but not a single bit messy. She had a delicate jade face and a charming demeanor. He couldn't help but say, Brother Zhu really has a good color. I think even Song Yu, Panan, and Wei Jiezi were just like this in ancient times. Zhu Ying blushed slightly on her face, but there was no hint of shame or annoyance. 
she retorted with a smile, you are not an ancient person. And knows how Song Yu Pan and, and Wei Jiezi look. The little insect casually said, although I don't know, I'm sure I can't compare to brother Zhu. Zhu Ying couldn't help but say, how do I look? The little insect casually recited, Pian and graceful Zhu Sheng, like the sun in the east, ten and four years old, with a light chariot following the wind. He smiles well with his face, speaks eloquently with his beautiful mouth, and recites the words of a gentleman, warming him up like jade. His form is both graceful and his attire is fresh, and he looks forward to the divine flight, like a young peach and plum. Zhu Ying's face turned pink, as if angry, and she said, What nonsense this is! I'm angry. The little insect hesitated slightly and whispered, What's wrong with my father's poetry and prose? Why is Brother Zhu angry? A few years ago, his father sent a stable family to send back a collection, and wrote a letter reminding him, only for Wang Chong to watch, no second person is allowed to read it. Wang Chong's mother also didn't mind and gave the collection to her son without further questioning. Wang Chang's father sent the collection back to his old house, collecting over a hundred poems and dozens of articles. On the title page, he wrote a reminder that his son must memorize it proficiently. At that time, Xiao Chong slightly flipped through it and felt that all the poetry and prose in it were unparalleled and ancient, and all the articles were stunning. He speculated that it was written by his father. He was worried that his son's literary talent was insufficient, so he prepared it for catching a knife. In the future, if needed urgently, it could be used to compete for some fame. He had no admiration for his father's literary talent, but he was completely indifferent to this matter and determined not to take it lightly. At this moment, I joked privately with Zhu Ying and recited a poem praising young men's sexuality, but I didn't expect Zhu Ying to dislike it. The little bug was afraid of offending its friend, so it quickly apologized. However, Zhu Ying chuckled and said, Unless you write another poem, if I am satisfied, I will forgive you. End of this chapter Chapter 8 Beautiful youth in green robes, jade trees facing the wind. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 8 Beautiful youth in green robes, jade trees facing the wind Zhu Ying was very dissatisfied and said to herself, It's just a matter of not forgetting after a glance. Poets are also so talented. Is Wang Chong a perfect person in the world? I don't believe he can still write poems with the same title. Although Xiao Chong has the ability to never forget, writing poetry is another talent, but he has no ability to rely on. When he heard this, he was stunned for a long time, holding back until he saw sweat on his forehead, but still did not have the talent. Zhu Ying couldn't bear to see Wang Chong looking so silly, and was about to ease his tone by saying that he was just joking. Xiao Chong was afraid that his friend would get angry, so he suddenly remembered an old poem from his father's collection and whispered, It's a pity that my father has another poem that praises beautiful men. Otherwise, how can I make brother Zhu calm down? He hesitated for a moment, calmed down, and recited, A young man in a green robe, with a jade tree in front of the wind, a thousand poems and essays are written in the morning, and he loves to escape meditation while drunk. Zhu Ying was stunned for a moment, then lowered his head and glanced at him. He was wearing a green robe and murmured, There really is such a perfect man in the world. Suddenly, his mood sank and he whispered, Sleep off. We still have classes tomorrow. The little insect breathed a sigh of relief, took off its clothes and lay down, silently thinking about those inscriptions. Before long, it had already fallen asleep. But Zhu Ying tossed and turned, unable to sleep. He heard Wang Chong snoring slightly, reignited the lamp, looked at Wang Chong carefully for a while with the flickering light, and whispered, Pian Pian youth, stunning talent. After pondering for a long time, Zhu Ying suddenly turned red on her face, blew out the lights, and lay down again. However, there were countless thoughts in her mind, going back and forth, constantly fluctuating, until dawn when she faintly fell asleep. The next day, Wang Chong and Zhu Ying both got up late and didn't have time for breakfast. The little bug stood up first, saw that the sun was not right, 
and quickly called out to Zhu Ying. Zhu Ying was startled and quickly exclaimed, Oh no, hurry up and start. If it's a little late, we won't even be able to attend class. The little insect hurriedly dressed, while Zhu Ying lay down in her clothes, not needing to, but needing a little grooming. Both of them moved quickly, but in an instant, they went out together and ran hand in hand. When he arrived outside the library, Zhu Ying finally realized that he had been pulling Wang Chang's hand all the way. Fortunately, he ran all the way with a slight blush on his face, but he couldn't tell the stirring emotions. He hurriedly said, if my master asks me about it today, I will say that I will recite my homework at night and even go to bed late. I must not say that I will return late. The rules of the White Egret Academy are strict. If you know that little brother Wang Chong is wandering around at night, he might drive you home. Xiao Chong also looked stern and bid farewell to Zhu Ying. Before he could sit still, he heard the master call out, Wang Chong, come with me. He thought he was going to be scolded and felt very anxious. His mother sent him to study, and if he was kicked back for not following the rules, it would definitely anger his mother. The little bug is figuring out how to pass the level. Song Gonglian brought this intelligent student and rushed straight into Dean Sun Fei's study, saying, This is Wang Chong. Sun Fei saw that Wang Chong had a simple and honest appearance, and he had a good impression on him. He asked, have you ever studied? Wang Chong had long heard that the dean was a great Confucian scholar of the time, who wrote numerous books and articles. He had a long history and a reputation throughout the world. He felt nervous and whispered, I became a scholar last year. Sun Fei was slightly surprised and said, Since you have a scholar and fame, you should join the B. class. How did you get to the D. class? Song Gonglian was also unaware that Wang Chong had already achieved a scholar status, so he smiled and said, I was planning to fight for a spot in Class C for him, but I didn't expect this child to have a scholar status. It's my clumsiness. Sun Fei also smiled and said, Are you going to the township examination next year? Xiao Chong nodded quickly and replied, We really need to go to the township examination. Sun Fei said, I heard from Gong Lian that you are able to recite the annotations of the six histories with great diligence. Nowadays, when the court selects scholars, it is mainly through consultation, but if you want to succeed, you also need to put in effort in serious articles. Xiao Chong was very nervous in front of great Confucian masters like Sun Fei, with a dazed expression on his face. Sun Fei said a few words, but couldn't help but smile. He thought to himself, this child has a good character, but he is not very lively and loves to be nervous. He reminded Song Gonglian to stay and let Wang Chong leave on his own. Xiao Chong left Sun Fei's yard and breathed a sigh of relief. His spirit was slightly uplifted, but when he saw Zhu Ying approaching, he smiled and said, let's go eat together. Hurriedly said, very good. Zhu Ying chuckled and said, Yesterday those people all skipped class and went to wait outside Xiao Fuzi's room, hoping to learn from their master and seek immortality. They didn't see anyone come back day and night, and they were all disappointed. They were all punished today. Xiao Chong also found it extremely interesting, but he was not good at words and couldn't find any suitable words. He just smiled foolishly and didn't know how to support the audience. Zhu Ying didn't care either. They chatted and when they arrived at the cafeteria, he still made the decision and ordered a few light dishes for Wang Chong. He himself was still a bowl of vegetarian noodles and ate very politely. After lunch, the two of them went back to rest together. In the afternoon, Zhu Ying still had classes, leaving only Wang Chong. He memorized a book in the attic for a while and couldn't help but release the black cloud. This black cloud can be big or small reaching its maximum size, covering an area of half an acre. It shrinks but is the size of a fist and can fit into a sleeve. Even the little worm doesn't know what this thing is. What else can we do? What kind of wonderful use is there? In that deep and gloomy path, with continuous births and vast soup, 
like a dragon startling a stinging insect, the inscriptions with the meaning of being unable to resist can be manipulated, but they can only be big or small, can be released or collected, can float or sway, and still contain the faint sound of wind and thunder. The little insect played with the attic for a while, and the black cloud rolled back and forth obediently. Suddenly, he had a strange idea and said to himself, I wonder if it's possible to sit up and fly up like some Luo Lao Yao. He jumped up and sat on the black cloud, but passed through it and fell to the ground. His buttocks didn't hurt, and he suddenly felt disappointed. The black cloud scattered by Wang Chang's buttocks lingered around his body, with a hint of coolness. The little insect reached out and pressed the ground, wanting to get up, but didn't expect its whole body to float lightly. Under the swirling clouds and mist, it flew away. He was horrified in his heart, with his limbs running wildly. He was in mid-air, turning around lightly and agile like a monkey swimming in the clouds. Staying with his feet glued to the ground, the little bug was startled and restless, but he was overjoyed. He couldn't describe what it felt like, but he felt that this thing was no longer a dark wind. Its usage is very peculiar, not just for flying in the air, but more like a weapon that can be rigid, flexible, and invisibly transformed. It can be inserted into the pores of the body, released, and shrouded in clouds and mist, making people flexible like birds, making various unimaginable movements in the air. Is this a new magic weapon that I have dismantled and refined? The little insect played for a while, collected the black cloud, and then took out the copper ring again. He thought to himself, throwing this object can smash people, and it's probably not a powerful treasure. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been thrown away by that Taoist. Or maybe they already thought this item was too useless and intentionally left it behind, which can be considered as a reward for asking for directions. After practicing for a few days, Xiao Chong became particularly skilled in handling it. However, he was strictly disciplined by his mother since childhood, relaxed for two or three hours, played with two treasures for a while, and still remembered to study. There are still more than ten volumes of books distributed by the academy that have not been memorized. Little Bug dare not indulge too much, so he collected two things and took out the bookshelf again, slowly reciting the unfamiliar volumes. End of this chapter Chapter 9 Master and Apprentice you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Master and Apprentice After Zhuang left school, she missed Wang Chong and didn't go to the cafeteria first. Instead, she came to the warehouse to find him. Before entering the room from afar, he called out, Wang Chong, come down quickly. Let's go eat together. Xiao Chong happened to be carrying a book and felt a bit tired. He immediately put down the book in his hand, responded, and walked down the attic to go to the cafeteria with Zhu Ying. Although they had only known each other for a day, Wang Chong and Zhu Ying had already fallen in love and were very familiar with each other. After dinner, the two of them went back to the warehouse together and recited their notes in the attic. Zhu Ying was stimulated by Wang Chong and worked ten times harder than usual. However, before he could finish half of the book on his end, he heard Wang Chong memorize another volume, feeling very discouraged and secretly calling out, Wang Chong, little brother, you really don't deserve to be a good person. Several days passed, as black clouds rushed and Xiao Fuzi's identity was exposed, the White Egret Academy gradually passed, and the number of people waiting in front of Xiao Fuzi's yard on the back mountain decreased every day. Xiao Chong was promoted to Class B and gradually became familiar with the life in the academy. He had a kind and honest personality, and was accustomed to strict discipline from his mother, so he didn't mind working harder in his studies. On this day, Xiao Chong got up as usual and was about to go to school with Zhu Ying when he saw his elderly family bringing his six sons over. He called out and asked, What's up? Liu Zi has been in the countryside for a long time and has never seen the world before. The academy is filled with scholars everywhere, and his speech and behavior are different from those of his peers in the countryside. Along the way, what he saw was fresh and he was very amazed. When he heard his young master's call, he quickly replied, My mistress has come to write to me. 
The little insect was overjoyed and said, Hurry up with me. He took the letter and thought about going to class, saying, Wait for me outside the academy. Later, I will write a letter to my mother. The old man still took Lu Zi out, and no idle people were allowed to walk around in the academy. Lu Zi could not wait in the academy. Zhu Ying stayed with Wang Chong for a few days, and after getting a glimpse of his family situation, he pondered, I don't know how talented Mrs. Wang is to raise someone like Wang Chong's younger brother who can show off his social skills. Xiao Chong has a strict family education. He dare not say that his father was a court attendant, but rather an ordinary official. He did not mention that his parents were not very harmonious, but only that his father was an official outside and his mother raised him alone, which was very difficult. Zhu Ying smiled and said, Auntie must be worried about my younger brother. Why don't I take a leave for you and go back to read a letter first? The little insect shook its head, opened the letter, glanced at it, looked at ten lines at a glance, and said, Mother didn't say anything, just asked the old family to bring some clothes. He received the letter with a calm expression on his face, but a slight worry in his heart. Wang Chang's mother wrote a letter, but it was not an ordinary matter. There was another strange incident happening in the village, where dozens of villagers died suddenly in their dreams, and seven or eight outsiders from the martial arts world also died. The methods of death were different, and hiring many monks and Taoists was useless. Xiao Chong's mother said in the letter that she had already returned to the neighboring county's mother's house for temporary shelter, so that her son didn't have to worry. The little insect thought to himself, fortunately, my mother has returned to my grandfather's house, otherwise I don't know how to worry about being a human. Why do people in the village die suddenly in their dreams? Why do outsiders die differently? Is it still related to the stone tablets in the mountains? His mother still reminded him in the letter to focus on his studies and prepare for the exam next year. He was not allowed to visit neighboring counties, so Xiao Chong naturally dared not disobey his mother's wishes, but his mind was extremely difficult. Unfortunately, that black cloud is only a small piece of material, and it will not restore the wonderful use in the master's hands. Otherwise, how good would it be for me to travel a thousand miles overnight to visit my mother? The little insect let out a faint sigh. Seeing that he was not very happy, Zhu Ying advised him a few words, but the little insect remained uninterested. After school at noon, he wrote a letter and handed it to the six sons waiting outside the academy. Liu Zi and Yueya, a book boy and a personal maid, were young, so they had to send letters to each other, and Wang Bo had to run around. Last time Wang Bo went back to report safety, he brought a letter this time. After receiving a reply from Wang Chong, he had to go to the ancestral home in the neighboring county to hand it over to his mother-in-law, which was very difficult. After listening to the lecture during the day, Xiao Chong was lost in thought. He packed up his books and deliberately went to find Zhu Ying. He calculated the time, but it seemed too late. He thought to himself, let's go to class A and take a look. If Xu is not here, he will go back and recite. Xiao Chong doesn't have many good friends in his hometown. He studies hard all day, but the children in the same village are happy to play. We can't play together, so it's easy to have classmates like Zhu Ying who are close friends and often miss being together. He walked around to Class A and indeed saw that the library was empty and no one was around, and neither the teacher nor the students were there. Xiao Chong had anticipated and was not disappointed. As he was about to go back, he suddenly saw Zhu Ying rushing towards him from afar, ready to greet him. Zhu Ying had already gone to the back mountain. Xiao Chong chuckled inwardly and said to himself, It turns out that Brother Zhu also cares about his apprentice Xiao Fuzi. I haven't heard of anyone else living on the back mountain of the academy. The little insect became curious and tiptoed behind its friend, wanting to startle him. Zhu Ying seemed to have something on her mind, but she didn't notice it. She walked out of the academy by a side door and went up the mountain. After half an hour, she was in a thatched cottage. A tall and upright young man stood outside the thatched cottage, leisurely observing the wind and clouds. 
Zhu Ying bowed her hand as a gesture of courtesy, with a respectful attitude, and said, Master, are you leaving? The little bug was greatly surprised and thought to himself, so this is Shofu. I didn't expect that brother Zhu Ying had a close relationship with this master and actually had a master's title. He was lost in thought when the young man smiled and said, Why did you bring your friend over? Young man behind the tree. I heard your disciple say you don't need to hide. Xiao Chong was slightly surprised and hesitated for a moment before walking out of his hiding place. He bowed and said shyly, I was curious for a moment, but I came with brother Zhu to spy on his secrets. He bowed deeply to Zhu Ying again and said, I wanted to scare brother Zhu. This is not polite, and I apologize to brother Zhu. Zhu Ying gently covered her mouth, but didn't say anything. She lowered her head and didn't know what she was thinking. The young man smiled and said, It's okay, I've already revealed my whereabouts. I don't want to stay for a long time. When I come back this time, I'll remind my disciple to leave in a few words. Xiao Chong bowed deeply again. Just now, it was an apology, and this time it was a serious salute. He said, Wang Chong, a student from Bailu Academy, has seen Xiao Fuzi. The young man smiled and said, From now on, I won't be teaching at the White Egret Academy anymore. You don't need to call me master, just call me Mr. Xiao. I happen to have something to remind my disciple of, so there's no need to betray anyone. Come and listen together. Xiao Fuzi leisurely walked into the thatched cottage, and the little bug approached Zhu Ying and whispered, I didn't mean to, don't be angry. Zhu Ying whispered, I'm not angry. Xiao Chong finally felt at ease, but Zhu Ying gently tugged at his sleeve and led him straight into the thatched cottage. There is very little furniture in the thatched cottage, among which is a very spacious straw bed with a low table on it. Apart from that, there is nothing else. Xiao Fuzi sat at the back of the low table, reached out and pointed to the straw couch, saying, Please sit well. Zhu Ying and Wang Chong sat honestly at the low table, opposite Xiao Fuzi. Xiao Fuzi ignored Wang Chong and said to his disciple with a smile, The young man in a green robe is beautiful, and the jade tree is in front of the wind. He wrote a thousand poems and essays in the morning, and when he was drunk, he loved to escape meditation. Escaping Zen may not be enough, but escaping home is certain. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Deceiving Immortals You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Deceiving Immortals Xiao Fuzi gave Wang Chong a meaningful glance, and the little bug's face was feverish. He thought to himself, so Brother Zhu brought this matter up to Xiao Fuzi. He occasionally turned around and saw Zhu Ying's cheeks as white as jade, bright red, like cooked shrimp. Xiao Chong felt a little guilty and was about to apologize when Zhu Ying reached out and grabbed his palm, gently pinching it. Zhu Ying's hands were as smooth as jade, her fingers were slender and slightly moist, making her heart feel nervous. Xiao Chong knew that Zhu Ying wouldn't let him speak, so she remained silent. Xiao Fuzi chuckled a little, but didn't continue to tease his disciple. He said, when there was a severe drought in the southeast, I begged your father to reign to save the victims. I made an agreement with your father that if he is willing to reign, I will teach you swordsmanship for three years. You have come to the mortal world to study. As a teacher, I want to find a secluded place to recuperate. I will come to the White Egret Academy to teach you swordsmanship. There should have been several years of mentorship, but Luo Laoyao broke the treasure trove and couldn't stay in the academy. The remaining two years and nine months were temporarily sent to the future. After I leave, you must work hard day and night, otherwise we will have no goodbye as masters and disciples. Zhu Ying nodded slightly and whispered, I know. Xiao Fuzi nodded slightly. He was quite satisfied with this disciple, but due to the rules of the sect, he could not accept it as a true disciple. He only agreed to become a named disciple. He glanced at Wang Chong, smiled slightly, and said, I promise you that this young man can understand the Yuan Yuan sword technique together. Zhu Ying's face lit up with joy, and he quickly tugged at Wang Chong. 
Little Bug didn't know what was going on. After listening for a while, he guessed that Zhu Ying and Xiao Fuzi were both very human. Seeing Zhu Ying bowing to the ground, he also followed suit. In his ear, Zhu Ying's voice was soft and he said with endless joy, I thank Master for his kindness. Xiao Nan said, The Yuan Yuan sword technique is a secret transmission in our school, and it is extremely precious. Except for this young man, I cannot allow it or pass it on to others. Otherwise, I will be careful not to spread it for thousands of miles, and I will be executed with a flying sword. Zhu Ying quickly answered yes. The little insect, however, felt like flipping the river and the sea, and secretly said, Brother Zhu, is this buying me a chance to cultivate immortality? He suddenly remembered in his mind that as his father's first child, he was greatly favored by his father when he was young. At that time, my father was not yet a servant, but just a county magistrate in a poor and small county. In addition to solving cases every day, he often told many strange stories with him, lamenting that he never had the chance to meet a fairy in his life. At that time, Xiao Chong was young and unsure of his height. He asked, it is said that immortals only pass on fate. What if my father does not have fate? My father was stunned for a long time, and after seven or eight days, he said to him, anyone who is human must have flaws, and immortals are no exception. He also told him seven or eight stories, all of which were about the ascent of a senior immortal, leaving behind the secret technique, treasure elixir, and the destined routine, resembling a legendary tale and a strange history. Father smiled and said, if you encounter immortals, tell them these stories and exchange them for a chance to cultivate immortality. The little insect was puzzled and asked, with these immortal relics, our father and son can go and retrieve them. Why bother seeking immortals again? The father said, these are all stories made up for my father in the past few days. How can I get things? The little insect was shocked and asked, isn't this deceiving the fairy? My father smiled and said, inferring what is recorded in ancient books, just leave the blame on our predecessors. Xiao Chong still remembers that his father told him these things, but his mood was low for a long time, and he was not very happy for several days in a row. After hesitating for a moment, he took a deep breath and whispered, Mr. Xiao, would you like me to learn swordsmanship or not, so as not to burden Brother Zhu? Xiao Nan was slightly surprised. He had seen countless ordinary people in his life and heard that he could learn swordsmanship and comprehend immortal methods. He begged hard, but no one would refuse. He smiled and said, Don't you regret it? Xiao Chong said honestly, I will definitely regret it, but if someone threatens me with Zhu's life and forces me to say the sword technique, if I don't say it, it will be cold and thin. If I say it, it will harm Zhu, so it's a dilemma. It's better not to learn. Zhu Ying was deeply moved and scolded in a low voice, Don't talk nonsense. This is a rare fate, don't be stubborn and miss your future. Xiao Nan looked at the dispute between the two little ones and was amused. Just as he was about to speak, he heard the immature voice of the little insect and said, Mr. Xiao fought against people that day, and the outcome was unknown. Xiao Nan smiled slightly and said, In my early years, I fought against Luo Laoyao once and suffered some losses. Over the years, I have gained some success by practicing a martial arts technique in seclusion. Not only have I healed my old injuries, but my swordsmanship has also improved. I have already killed Luo Laoyao. The little insect pondered slightly and chose a story, saying, a student once saw in a travelogue that immortals travel on golden auspicious clouds. Why did Luo Laoyao drive on black clouds? Xiao Nan smiled and said, that's a group of demon clouds condensed from his practice of the black wind technique, a technique from a different sect. In which travelogue did you see the saying that immortals travel on golden auspicious clouds? Xiao Chong replied, My father happened to have an ancient travelogue that records a woodcutter cutting firewood deep in the mountains and seeing the golden clouds coming and going. When he came back to talk to people, the owner of the travelogue was curious and followed the woodcutter into the deep mountains. 
After waiting for several months, he did indeed see the golden auspicious clouds flying from the mountain peak. Xiao Bug vividly told the story his father had made up back then, and Xiao Fuzi and Zhu Ying listened to it without any doubt. Although Xiao Nan had a deep cultivation, he couldn't help but feel agitated. After Wang Chong finished telling the story and asked for many details, he asked again, is that travelogue still there? The little insect replied as if it had done something wrong, the students are not infatuated with such miscellaneous books, which has delayed their studies. My mother is very angry and has already burned that volume of travelogue. Xiao Nan felt very regretful in his heart and pondered, isn't this the story about the Red Wand Immortal? Only the escape method of the Red Wand lineage is a golden cloud of light. Before hearing that he ascended, he sealed all the Taoist techniques he had learned throughout his life, as well as the nineteen treasures he had refined, and waited for fate to come. That mountain field must be the treasure trove chosen by the Red Wand Immortal. I didn't expect many fellow disciples who couldn't find it, but heard such a true secret among ordinary people. I should be considered a destined person. He pondered for a moment in his heart, glanced at Wang Chong, and suddenly smiled, this matter is of great benefit to me. If I obtain this secret, I cannot do without a reward. What do you want? As long as I can do it, I will definitely give it to you. Zhu Ying's face lit up with joy and she whispered, hurry up and learn from your teacher. Xiao Bug could tell that Xiao Nan didn't even want to take his apprentices. If Xiao Fuzi wanted to take his apprentices, he could just say that he could take them. Why bother taking this detour? He thought to himself, my father once said that most immortals don't like those who are greedy, so they want to seek immortality. They can't do it for themselves. They should seek it for others and lure the immortals to give the Dharma voluntarily. The little insect said honestly, I want to ask for a magic weapon for Brother Zhu. Upon hearing this, both Xiao Nan and Zhu Ying were surprised. End of this chapter